All right, all righty. So in the last video, I talked about the bear put spread assignment reversal strategy. So I shared with you, you know, three simple ways for you to unwind any assignment on your bull put spread. Now for this video, we are going to be talking about the bull put spreads counterpart, which is the bear call spread. Right, so what do you do if you get assigned on your bear call spread? So the bear call spread is slightly different to what you would do when you get assigned to your bull put spread. So you really want to pay attention to this. So for this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the bear call spread assignment reversal strategy. Basically, also three simple steps to unwind a call credit spread assignment. So on the left hand side, you can see that we have the chart and I also put on the call spread. So the question is, when are you most likely to get assigned on your bear call spread? So if you have watched the last video, then you will know that it will only get assigned if your short strike, the short leg of your credit spread, be it the bull put spread or the bear call spread, if it's in the money, right? If it's out of the money, there's no way it's going to get assigned, right? If you get assigned on an out of the money option, then you're in luck because you're going to reap the profits immediately, right? So it's only normally when your short call leg is in the money for the bear call spread. Okay, and it's also when the extrinsic value of the short call leg is very little and usually when there's not many days to expiration left and or your short call leg is deep in the money. That means the market has gone all the way past even your long call strike price, right? So at this point, you could get assigned pretty early depending on you know how much extrinsic value left and also more importantly if this stock which you're trading this equity or index ETF actually pays a dividend right so when the extrinsic value is lesser than the dividend paid if any right then there will be a chance for early assignment and this is what you call dividend risk now for the bull put spread because we are doing uh, the short put, right, you only have the short put leg, there is no dividend risk, right? There is no such thing as dividend risk for the bull put spread. But for the bear call spread, there is dividend risk because the buyer of this call option, basically now you are short the call option. Now the opposite side is basically the call option buyer. Now this call option buyer can choose to actually exercise his call option and then get long 100 shares on his end. And the reason he might want to do that is because the stock could be paying a dividend that is much more than the extrinsic value of this call option that he's holding on to. So for example, if this call option right now, let's say only have 20 cents of extrinsic value left. But for this stock, right, maybe it's paying, let's say about 50 cents for the dividend. So if the dividend, let me just put div down here so you can see, and this is extrinsic value. So if the dividend is more than the 20 cents of extrinsic value left, then the buyer of this call option is more incentivized to exercise his call option, right? Because when he exercises it, he gets 100 shares. At the same time, he will be able to get this 50 cents dividend. Now, if he was to just sell off his call option instead of exercising it, he would only get 20 cents. So it makes more sense for him to exercise it and then get this dividend. So this is where you also have to really pay attention to your extrinsic value as well as how much dividend that the stock is actually paying out. Now, if the stock doesn't pay any dividend at all, then you don't have to worry about this. So what happens when you're assigned on your short call leg? So this is the opposite of the bull put spread. The bull put spread on your short put leg, you will be long 100 shares. But because this is a short call, what happened is that you will be short 100 shares instead at the strike price of your short call. So in this example, let's say it's 200. So basically you'll be short 100 shares at $200. And you may get a margin call if you don't have sufficient funds to short the 100 shares. So at this point, what do you do? Now, in my previous video on the bull put spread reversal strategy, I mentioned to first reinstate the original option that got assigned, right? Basically, it's the same strike and the same DTE and then decide whether, you know, you want to close out the position or to roll the position to a further DTE. Now, after releasing that video, I've had a few people reached out to me and mentioned, you know, why do you want to do that, right? Why not just instead straight away close out the position or to roll it out to a further DTE. And the only reason I did it that way is because the majority of the people on my channel are new to trading options and I wanted to make it very step by step so they don't get confused, right? So for example, let's say you already have the 100 shares and then you have one long put at the bottom. Now, if you were to change this straight away, if you were to sell this off and then you sell one maybe with a 50 DTE, so what you're going to be left with is you're going to have a 50 
50 DTE short put and then you have 8 DTE uh, long put down here and you know a lot of people when they're just new to trading options they get a little bit confused by this right why is there two different DTEs so I wanted to just make it step by step but then again now I understand that there are quite a number of overachievers that you guys here have been trading options for some time and you guys are pretty experienced and I like that, right? So for this video, I would just get right to the essential steps to reverse an assignment and cut out all the shenanigans of, you know, reinstating the original positions, all right? So there are two options once you're assigned, all right? So the very first option is to close out the whole position for a loss, right? So maybe you've got assigned on your short call now, you have a short 100 shares and then you still have this long call option down here. What do you do now? If you want to close this out for a loss, well, first of all, here's the wrong way to do it, right? The wrong way to do this is to exercise this long call option. Because if you know, if you were to exercise this long call option, you'll basically be buying 100 shares. But the problem with this is that you'll be realizing the maximum loss when it's not at a maximum loss. So you will only reach the maximum loss of a credit spread right be a call spread or a put spread only at expiration so if there's still time left in your spread it's not going to be a max loss yet unless it's so deep in the money right unless it's extremely deep in the money whereby this uh, call option does not even have any extrinsic value but for the most part there should be still some value inside your call option, some extrinsic value. So there's no real need for you to exercise this call option, right? If you exercise this, you're going to realize your max loss immediately, which you do not have to. So instead, what you want to do is this, right? You want to buy back the 100 shares. So when you buy back the 100 shares, you have no longer any position here. Then all you have to do is just close out this long call position. Right, and then you do all this in a single order ticket. So it's actually very simple. And when you sell away this call option, chances are that there are still some extrinsic value left in this call option. So it's this extrinsic value in this call option that's gonna help you reduce the maximum loss, right? Your maximum loss is basically the width of this spread minus off the credit that you receive for this call spread, all right? So if you have still some extrinsic value in this call option left, by selling this call option instead of exercising it, you're still going to get, you know, back some value which you would have lost if you were to just exercise it. Because remember, when you exercise an option, you basically just forfeit any extrinsic value that you have, right? So instead of just exercising it, just sell it off, okay? So this is for option one if you want to close out the whole position for a loss. Now, option two, what if you are still bearish and you think that the market might actually come down? Now, in the previous video, I talked about reinstating it. And then from there, you can actually see whether you're going to get a credit or a debit for rolling in, right? So that's one of the things why I mentioned to reinstate the original position. Now, if you don't reinstate the original position, then this is where you need to be, you know, pretty clear. Are you going to get a credit or a debit? And if you're going to get a debit, do you still want to roll out to a further time, you know, just to hold on to this spread, you know, slightly increase your risk? and maybe the trade will work out in your favor, right? So if you choose this option, then this would be the way to do it, right? So first of all, you want to buy back the 100 shares, and then you want to sell a call option with the same strike, but with a longer DTE. That means you have already assumed that you want to roll out to a later DTE, right? So let's say, for example, the original one was maybe 8 DTE, okay? So the original one was 8 DTE, so both of these will be 8 DTE. So what you want to do is step one and two, you want to do this together, right? These two steps together. And if you do these two steps together, there won't be that lagging risk. Otherwise, there'll be a lagging risk. So you want to buy back the 100 shares and then sell a call option with the same strike, but with a longer DTE. That means this strike, which your short call is at. So maybe this time you want to change it to, I don't know, maybe something like 50 DTE. So now when you do step one and two together, what you will end up with would be a short call with 50 DTE. So now you're left with a long call of 8 DTE. What do you do, right? So there are many things you can do with this and I wanna just keep things very simple because if you're not that advanced and then you see one with an 8 DTE, one with a 50 DTE, you may get confused on what to do, right? So if you were to just roll it as per usual, let's say for example, the original position would be two 8 DTEs, right? So this will be 8 DTE call spread. Now assume that at the point of time you hadn't got assigned, 
what would you have done if you wanted to roll? You would just roll both of them to 50 DTE, correct? Right, if that's the DTE that you choose. So for this long call, since now you have already done the short call portion because it was originally assigned, now you have changed it to a 50 DTE short call at the same strike. If you have rolled it, the whole position, the original position, this would also become a 50 DTE. So what's left right here is to roll this long call option to the same DTE as your short call. So at this point in time, when you roll it, now you will have a call spread with 50 DTE at the same strike. Now, whether it's going to be an overall credit or a debit really depends on whether the current price is closer to the short call or the long call, right? If it's closer to the short call, maybe somewhere around this price down here, then chances are it will be for an overall credit. That means your maximum risk on the trade would actually be reduced. But if it's actually closer to this long call option down here, or if it's already way past this long call option, then chances are it's going to be for a debit. That means you're going to pay to roll it. Because essentially, if, if you think about it, what you're actually doing is just rolling it to a further DTE, right? The only difference is the extra step, right? Because you have been assigned the 100 shares in the first place. So whether you want to roll it for a debit, 100% is your discretion. Because if you think that the market is going to go down, then, you know, rolling for that additional debit for, you know, a couple of cents, I don't know, maybe 20, 30, 50 cents, could actually, you know, be good in the longer picture or rather in the bigger picture because if the market comes down, expires out of money, then you're going to profit on this whole position. But then again, you need to think that, you know, what if the market continues going up, then this is where you need to know when you're going to cut loss, when you're going to take a loss and your risk would have been bigger compared to before. But then again, I want to put out this option because some of you do want to still hold on to this bear call spread and not let this assignment get in the way of your original idea of putting on this bear call spread, right? Especially if your original short call option or rather this whole uh, call spread has still many days left, right? Let's say, for example, what if it has 38 DTE left and you have been assigned on the short call, right? If you have been assigned at 38 DTE, then you know, this would a little bit kind of disrupt your strategy, right? Especially if you go according to, you know, you want to exit at 21 DTE, then at this point, yeah, you want to resume it. And if it's for a debit, you could consider, you know, going for a debit, all right? But the best thing still is to try and avoid an assignment in the first place. By the way, if you like this video so far, please subscribe and also click the thumbs up button and also do get your free copy of the Options Income Blueprint where I share the top three options strategies that help you generate a consistent income each month trading just one to two hours a day, right? So if you want to go ahead to get this copy, just head on over to optionswithdavis.com slash blueprint. All right, back to the video. How do you actually prevent and avoid early assignment in the first place, right? Prevention, again, better than cure. Rather than get into the whole mess of, you know, having to unwind, having the, the margin call, and then you will have a lot of anxiety and stress, why not just remove that whole early assignment risk in the first place? So how do you do this? Well, the first way is basically to just exit at 21 DTE when your short call leg is in the money, right? So if there's still like, let's say 30 days left to expiration, and if it's in the money, you don't really have to worry because there's still some extrinsic value left, chances of you getting early assigned is still low. Now, if for some reason you do get you know, early assigned and there's still more than 21 DTE, then basically you just go back to do these three steps which I've shared with you, all right? But if you don't get assigned and it's roughly around 21 DTE and your short call strike is in the money, just exit the trade, right? Just exit this whole spread and then just wait for another opportunity to enter again, right? The other way is to basically just trade the cash settle index options, right? The SPX, XSP, NDX, the RUD, so on and so forth. Because with these options, all right, with this cash settle index options, basically they are European style. So again, I already mentioned this in the last video. If you haven't watched that, please go and watch that as well. So this European style, basically there is no early assignment at all, right? You're not allowed to exercise the option. If you have uh, long options, you're not allowed to exercise this before expiration. The only time you can exercise it is only at expiration. So in this case, you can actually hold your spread all the way to expiration, right? So if you hold all the way to expiration, the broker will just tabulate whether is it a profit and loss, and then they will either, you know, credit or debit your trading account depending on the P&L. 
All right, guys, so this is the bear call spread assignment reversal strategy. By the way, if you like this video, then you're absolutely going to love this next video which I have for you. So go ahead and watch that video right now. Also, if you haven't already gotten your free copy of the Options Income Blueprint, you can do so just by clicking this link down here on your screen and you'll be able to get it for free. All right, I will see you in the next video.